Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our uh, incredible Lunch with Eaters program. We're very excited to have you join. Um, we're going to get started momentarily, but we're waiting for some more folks to, uh, to log in to join the attendance. Uh, so while we do that, I'm going to just go through some housekeeping, get us kicked off. Uh, again, this is the Lunch with Eaters uh, event. This is our 14th installment of Lunch with Eaters, which is hard to imagine because we weren't even doing this program before the pandemic, but it's a monthly virtual lunch and learn program built specifically for the UCI alumni community. That's you. We thank you all for taking the time out of your day to join us. And we, uh, every, every month we learn from a very interesting alum uh, from a different um, area of specialty. So this one will be very timely for the holiday season and very exciting. Um, I can vouch for it. My name is Jeff Menhasa. I'm executive director at the UCI Alumni Association, and I'm thrilled to welcome you. Um, we have a few resources I wanted to mention quickly before we get started. Uh, I mentioned this is a virtual event series. We have a plethora of virtual events that we do, that we've been doing and uh, having online uh, in our Anteaters Go Virtual webpage. We have all of our upcoming events listed there. We also have an archive of uh, almost every past event. So if there was one you missed, we have a recording of it that you can still access. And we have a brand new website as of this week that I would love to invite you to check out at alumni.uci.edu. Tons of information on there, ways to, to get involved a little bit more uh, uh, heavily with the university. We're always looking for volunteers and, and help and um, alumni enthusiasm. We also have content that you can enjoy, not just events, but content you can download, uh, work on offline uh, with your families and more. So check out Anteaters Go Virtual. We also have a, uh, a really great way to give back by way of mentorship. You as alumni can be mentors to our students and younger alumni through our Anteater Network platform. That's at antnet.uci.edu. So check those out, please. Now, for today, everyone in the audience is muted so that we can eliminate background noise and we can keep the program streamlined. However, we don't want you to stay silent. We want you to uh, participate as much as you would like. So use the Q&A feature here in Zoom uh, throughout the program. We're gonna have a pretty in-depth program by our featured speaker today. So as she goes, feel free to, to submit questions along the way. Then we're going to come back and have a 15 minute moderated Q&A session. I'll, I'll be asking the questions that you put in the Q&A and then we'll uh, get as many of those answered as we can uh, before we end sharply at one o'clock. Feel free to chat with each other as well. Uh, already shout out to Maria Ortega Kummer who is in Iowa City, Iowa. You get the award for uh, coming from uh, furthest away joining us today, but that's the glory of these virtual programs. So, so welcome, Maria. Okay, I am going to now introduce our featured speaker who I'm very excited to welcome. And that is Shannon, or excuse me, Shannon Gimble Hammer, class of 2003. Shannon grew up in Whittier, California and graduated from UCI in 2003 with a degree in social ecology and a minor in education. After, after college, almost immediately after college, she opened up Shannon G's Flowers and has now owned it for 17 years. She's married to a fellow anteater who's in the audience, shout out Gerald, and they have two daughters who are three and five years old. Shannon is currently the board president of the Boys and Girls Club of Whittier and also serves on the Whittier Community Foundation Board and Whittier Chamber of Commerce Executive Board. In her spare time, which I don't know exactly how much spare time she has after all those commitments, she works for Monat, uh, an all natural vegan hair, hair care and skin care company. So everyone, please join me virtually, of course, in giving Shannon Gimble Hammer a very warm anteater welcome. Welcome, Shannon. Hi. Here we go. Okay. Shannon Hi. is coming to us live from Shannon G's Flowers. Welcome. Yes. Hi. Thanks, Jeff. It's great to see you and thank you so much for, for being willing to do this program uh, for our alumni community. It's great, great to have you on virtually. Thank you. Thanks for asking me to do this. I'm happy to do it. 
Wonderful. Well, we, uh, we're going to benefit from your expertise having owned your business for 17 years when we get into to the wreaths. But first, you know, we all share that connection of UCI alumni. You and I were in school at the same time uh, as so many other alumni were. But regardless of what period, uh, we all share that connection. Maybe you could start off by sharing your favorite one or two memories from UCI, from your experience. Sorry, and if the phone rings, I am here at work, so I'm just going to go ahead and mute everybody that calls. But yes, I had a really uh, wonderful experience at UC Irvine. It was close to my house, and that's uh, from where I grew up, so that's why I chose UC Irvine, so I could come back and visit my family um, as often as I want. Um, but I have some great memories. Um, not only did I enjoy being at school there, but I enjoyed um, joining, <laughs> I'm sorry, joining my sorority and meeting some of my best friends that I still talk to on a weekly basis. Um, and also it, it obviously has a special place in my heart. I met my husband there. Um, and so I, I just have um, really, really good memories from UC Irvine. Uh, as, as many of us do, thank you for sharing that Shannon. Now, um, immediately after you graduated or pretty soon thereafter, you decided to, to do your own thing and open your own business right after college. Can you describe what that was like and um, what your, where your drive came from, if that's something you knew you were going to do or, or whatnot? Sure. Well, both my parents own their own businesses, so I knew eventually I wanted to um, have my own business as well. I just I grew up in a family um, that was uh, very supportive of that. And so after I graduated from UC Irvine, um, I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do. I thought maybe I'd go take some classes um, on learning how to do floral design. I thought it would always be fun to have that as a side job. Um, I ended up opening up a business um, a couple months after graduating um, right here at, at this location um, 17 years ago, like you had mentioned, and just decided to, to jump in and try. And so I did take some classes in Fullerton. Um, at a, it's called Southern California School of Floral Design. And so I took a bunch of classes and, um, and just really, really enjoyed it. So I can't believe it's been 17 years. Yeah, well, amazing. Great for you building a business and having it last and be so successful. Now, what, one of the other things that you've done is become incredibly involved in your community, which, which I thoroughly admire and appreciate. Uh, as I mentioned, you're the board president of the Boys and Girls Club of Whittier. You've been equally involved with the Whittier Community Foundation Board and Whittier Chamber of Commerce Executive Board. My goodness, on top of owning and running your own business. So to you, what is the importance of uh, connection and giving back to your community? Oh, I think it's so important. I, um, I grew up doing National Charity League. And my parents always uh, told us the value of giving back and, um, and doing charity work. And so from a very, very young, um, young age, sixth grade, we started doing charity hours. And I just, um, my heart is, is in it. So when I opened up my business here in Whittier, I knew I wanted to give back. And it's a way of people supporting you and you supporting them. And so um, when I first opened up my business, I called the Chamber of Commerce and that directly um, joined. I, I knew that I wanted to um, be involved. And since then I've become, um, I'm on the executive board right now, but I was also the chamber president for their hundredth year. Um, so the youngest chamber president. Um, so that was really fun. Um, and now the youngest um, boys and girls club president that we've had. So um, it's, it's pretty exciting. I love giving back. We do a lot of charity work um, and it's just so important um, as well as um, even, you know, doing this today, giving back to, um, to the school that, um, that I, you know, I learned everything from and met all of my best friends. So um, giving back is is such a big thing. And I, I hope everyone can give back. I mean, just this morning, I was talking to Gerald um, as I was driving through Starbucks. And I said, there's a police officer behind me. I'm going to give back. And I'm going to pay for his breakfast today. <laughs> and so I did. Um, and then I told him, when you have lunch, tip the bill, you know, pay whatever the bill is, tip them for, you know, the same amount as the bill. So it's so important if you have the means um, to do it, whether it's a dollar or it's $5, it doesn't matter, but just giving back to your community and giving back to the people that um, they care so much about, um, about us. Well, thank you for sharing. I mean, you're a model example of uh, someone who does give back both to your community and to your alma mater. And thank, you know, that's what you're doing today, volunteering to give back to our alumni community. Uh, that's something that strengthens us. You know, we have 200,000 alumni of UCI uh, 
the vast majority of us still want to be connected. So that's what you're doing and we really appreciate it. So thank you. Um, and uh, everything else you do, uh, paying, tipping large and paying for uh, other people's uh, Starbucks, man. What a model example of a great anteater. So um, I, we want to hear more from you. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out of the way in just a second. But before I do that, we have a poll for the audience. So everyone in the audience, polls popping up on the screen. How many of you have put together a flower arrangement at home before? Yes or no? I personally am going to answer yes, because I have rearranged some flowers slightly for an arrangement for my wife, who is also an anteater. Um, so that's a yes for me. Let's see what the results are. Percentage wise, the audience, 57% um, have put together a floral arrangement. 43 have not. So we've got some, some newbies to this on the audience. So we're going to learn from the best. I'm going to turn it over to Shannon to take us into the wreath wreath decorating demonstration. Shannon. Okay, great. Thanks, Jeff. So the first thing I'm going to show everybody is how to make a bow because that is like the number one question that I get. I've had a flower shop for 17 years. People don't ask me that many questions about flowers or anything else, but how do you make a bow? So here we go. So I've got, oh, no. Be right back. I need a pair of scissors. <laughs> Sorry. The one thing that I forgot on my table was a pair of scissors. So it's super important that you have scissors if you're going to cut ribbon. So I take my roll and I just spread out a good amount. And I do it all with this one hand. This is what this is the hand that's going to hold all of the ribbon together. So I hold it with my thumb, my first finger, and then I just start doing a loop. And you just keep on doing loops and just keep holding it with your thumb and your first finger. And you just keep on doing loops. If it's a double-sided ribbon like this one, you don't have to twist it because it's the same thing on both sides. So keep on doing loops as big as you wanna make it. For this wreath that I have right here, I already made a gold one, but the white I thought you'd be able to see better. Um, but you want kind of a, I mean, I, I think you want kind of a big bow. So I'm gonna make it even a little bit larger than this. And again, you just keep on making loops all different sizes. So it's super simple. I'm still holding it. And then I'm going to make some streamers. So I'm just taking the ribbon. It's still attached to the roll. And I'm going to do three streamers. And then I'm just going to cut them. Now that I have scissors. Them. And then grab a wire. And you're just going to go right where your thumb is. Put the wire together in the back and then just twist. And how simple was that? And you've got a big bow. And I tend to like ribbon that has what they have um, wire because then nothing droops. <laughs> it just stays perfect. So there it is. And if you're putting it into a flower arrangement, all you have to do is add it to a stick. Um, or a stem of one of the flowers. Just take a little piece off the stem. If you don't have a stick, just wrap it around and then put it right into the base. So for this, because we're doing a wreath, I made this gold bow ahead of time because I think I'm gonna just make this all gold and um, some natural pine cones. So when you have the wire, all you're gonna do is attach it to a piece that you would like of the green on the wreath. So I'm just gonna attach it right here. And you just twist the wire. I love wires. It's so easy. You could also use a glue gun, which I have right here as well. And you can make it bigger. You can make it smaller. You can glue the, um, the streamers in if you want. And I mean, if you want a simple wreath, that's really all you have to do. But I'm going to attach some pine cones and some ornaments to it as well. And like I said, I love wires. I use them for everything. These are longer wires, but I cut them in half. And so to do a pine cone, and you can get them outside if you want, or you can buy some. Um, Michael's has all of these little items attached, um, or just simple ornaments that you have laying around that you don't have on your tree. So I'll show you how to wire them. So here the pine cone, I'm gonna wire around the pine cone and just again, do a twist. So I have something to attach it to. And I'm just going to start attaching. 
and really it's just being like creative and however you want to design it. So I'm gonna wire on a couple pine tones and then I'll stand it up so you can see before I do the ornaments, but it's just a twist. I hope you guys think this is super simple because it is. You should definitely be able to do this at home. Um, I do love Michaels for all of like the little crafty items, but if you ever look to see how much they charge for one of these wreaths that's already done, now that you know how to make one, you'll never have to look at those prices again because they're pretty pricey for what they are. Okay. So just because I don't want to take up too much of your time, I'm just going to put on three instead of five just so you can get an idea. I always do things in odd numbers. I'm not sure it's a, it's a florist thing. I don't know why, but I always do things in odd numbers and then triangles. Oh, maybe because I was a tridel, I don't know. But so here we go, here's triangle there. Um, and so then I can attach ornaments now to the other areas in another triangle. So that way there's something everywhere. So an ornament, just like you put it on the tree with a little um, tree wire. I mean, I don't know what that's called, an ornament wire, ornament hanger. Um, so I just have it on here and then I'm just gonna pick another branch to attach it to. And I'm gonna do a few different shapes. Um, I just got these ornaments. I, I have them here in a box. It's just a variety. You really just need one box because the ornament's not that large. And just keep attaching them. I even brought out a garland and some gold snowflakes. You can really put whatever you want on here. Um, I decided just to do it all gold and natural colors, but you could do it red, white, and green. If you celebrate Hanukkah, like myself, you could do it all blue and white for your door. Okay. So I'm gonna attach a few more ornaments and then I'll show you guys what this looks like. I thought these little glittery snowflakes were a cute addition. So I'll attach a few of those. And I'm just using the wires. I'm not even using a glue gun right now. I have it here, but I don't think I even need it because the wires are so helpful. Here's another one. And then let's see what you guys think. I'm gonna put a few more on here because there's some holes, but I hope that this does seem easy for you guys. And be creative when you're doing them. You could put real flowers on here. You could put um, berries. I brought over some berries as well. Um, to have it last the longest, if you're gonna keep it out for the whole holiday season, I would suggest not putting flowers because they obviously need water. Um, but Reefs love being outside, so they will last a long time. I also brought over a garland, so if you wanted to add something like this, um, let's add that too. Okay, so for the garland, you can either glue it if you want. I'm just gonna do a little knot right now up at the top. I'm gonna tuck it behind. And then yeah, I'll use some glue. So I've got my glue gun here and just put it wherever you want. It doesn't, there's no right or wrong in a wreath. Just be careful you don't burn yourself because I've done that plenty of pick, pick spots if you have a, a garland, just pick different spots and I'm just gonna kind of weave it in between everything and then I'll pick it up and show you guys. This is kind of fun, I have a minor in education so I thought I was gonna become a teacher but 
This is my first go about at teaching anybody anything. So this happens to be long enough, so that was good. I'm just gonna keep bringing it around and gluing it in different spots. And if you glue something down and you don't like it, that's okay, there's so much greenery on these garlands. You can just simply, I mean on these wreaths, sorry, on these wreaths, you can just cut it off and keep on going. Okay. I've actually never put one of these types of garlands, like a jeweled garland on here. So this is a first for me too. Okay, okay so I have some excess, so I'm just gonna cut it. Okay. end of it and then I'll just pick it up okay so I just put the garland I'm gonna just pick some of the ribbons and then I'm gonna pick it up so so here here it is a super simple one cones some jeweled garland and some snowflakes um, with some ornaments but you could go as crazy as you want or or like I said earlier just put a bow on it and that would be enough so you could really just be creative and do um, whatever you would like but use a glue gun use wires it's super simple um, you can cut things off if you don't like it and um, and this will last the whole season so that's the wreath and then I told Jeff if I had time I would show you guys how to make a vase arrangement so I'm going to move this over Okay. Yeah, we're doing great on time, Shannon. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to make a vase arrangement. So if you don't um, buy flowers at a flower shop in a vase already, and you maybe go to Trader Joe's or Costco or wherever you go to get them, I'm gonna just show you a very simple way of how to put them into a vase. Um, so I already have water in my vase. I'm gonna do it red so that it's in the holiday spirit still. And you're going to want to get some tape and just make a grid. So we're going to tape across the top of the vase to make a grid so that way everything stands up. So kind of like tic-tac-toe, that's exactly what you're going to do. Okay, so I've got a grid across the top. Sorry, I remember everything except my knives and my, so you don't have to use a knife. I use a knife because I've been doing it for a long time and it's easier for me. But you could also use a pair of um, like garden shears. That will work too. Um, so what I typically do, I'm now, and I have a whole flower shop filled with flowers, so I have everything at my hands. But um, what I would do if, if I got a bouquet at, let's say, Trader Joe's, I would lay it all out and see what you have and what greenery they've given you. So I'm going to do some Christmas greens. So what you always want to do is you don't want to put any of the greens in the water because that's going to create mold and it's going to make them dirty. So I always just clean off and I'm at a flower shop, so I throw everything on the floor. But if you're at home, you might want to just put it <laughs> in a trash bag. Might be a little bit cleaner. I'm um, always cut everything on an angle because the flowers and the greenery will be able to drink. So if it's flat, it's gonna go straight down to the bottom and they're not gonna be able to drink. So always cut them on an angle and just put it right in. Um, so yeah, like I said, I use a I use a knife, but you can easily use a pair of shears as well. So just remember, always clean off the bottoms and then put it right in. So I'm gonna put a few more pieces in here. I always like to put them in all of the grid spaces, all of the holes, because then I know for sure 
um, everything's going to stand up nice and straight. So just keep on cutting and putting them in. You can go taller if you're making a centerpiece, you can go shorter. Um, but just always remember just to clean off the bottoms, no matter what kind of greenery it is. Uh, it shows recording, but nothing. And when you clean them off, it's also going to make it smell really good. You got some. Jeff, can you see me okay? Yeah, yep. Yeah, the visual is perfect. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to start with some berries. They're called hypericum berries. They smell really good. Um, I'm gonna grab my knife back. But so again, I do things like in triangles. So if I had three, which I do right here, I'm just gonna cut them at an angle and just start placing them in. Because you already have your grid. So at this point, it's super easy to make an arrangement. So you have something at all the sides, um, all around. You can see those berries on every side. And then I've got some tulips. So, I, and tulips grow, just so you know. So I cut them a little bit shorter because tomorrow they're gonna to be taller than the whole arrangement. Very interesting, they just keep on growing. So I'm gonna put three of those in here. And then you'll see that it's in triangles. Um, here's some mini carnations. So whatever you have available, you just start putting them in at all different locations. And then, like I mentioned, you'll be able to see it all the way around. That's the tape you can hear. So you can see it all the way around. And then usually if I have any roses or more expensive flowers, I'll leave those a little bit taller because that way you can see them a little bit nicer. So here's some white roses. Um, when you get roses, make sure the pieces that I'm taking off, that doesn't mean they're old, they're called guard petals. Just toss those aside and then you'll have a really pretty rose underneath there. But I always take off the guard petals. You'll see on this one, they just, the growers leave them on. So that way in transport, they don't get ruined. But then it's a beautiful rose underneath. So just keep on adding more flowers, whatever you have, but you would easily do this arrangement with picking up some flowers at the market. Or if you're close to Whittier and you want to stop by, I'll be more than happy to help you. And then here's just a little baby's breath. This is actually called Million Star because baby's breath is very easy to me. So this is smaller and nicer. So you just want to keep on adding and then we'll do a bow. Ace is getting pretty full, so I don't have much room left, but I'm going to add a bow. You can also add one of these to the arrangement if you're giving it as a gift, like a present. Um, add some fun little ornaments. These came from Michael's too. They're just like cute ornaments. You can put them on a stick and add them up top if you want to give it as a gift or like a centerpiece. And then if you want to make a bow, I'll do a quick bow. This one happens to be single sided. So on one side, you're going to see all the glitter on the other side, you're going to see nothing. So this means you have to twist it in your fingers. So after you do your first loop on each side, then you're going to have to twist it. Cause if I kept going, you would see nothing. So then you twist it and make the loop twist and loop. And of course this one does not need to be as big. So I'm just going to do three loops on each side with some streamers. And them. and then my wire. And then I have a bunch of sticks, but if you don't have sticks, I'm going to show you what you can do. So here, this was just left on here. I didn't use it. And so you could use this. So you're going to take this excess from the bottom wire this around. I have actual flower sticks that I use, but this is a way of, if you don't have those, they, 
you don't need them. And then you can just take this and go right into the base. So just like a quick arrangement, I hope that looks okay. Um, but when you're doing something like this, it doesn't have to be perfect and uniform. It can just be um, Christmas greens hanging out. And, um, and then if you want to cut the ribbons to give it that look, you can you just fold it, cut. I'm not sure if you can see that, but that's how you get the little points on the bottom of the ribbon. Just fold it and then give it a cut on the angle. So that's how to make a um, holiday arrangement or any arrangement. It doesn't have to be for the holidays, but the same exact way. Well, that is that is beautiful um, and so quick. Um, thanks for for sharing that tutorial. Now I have a couple follow-up questions, Shannon. Uh, before okay. I ask those though, I, I will ask everyone in the audience to, um, if you do have questions, be sure to put them in the Q&A because we're gonna get into the Q&A pretty uh, shortly, any any minute. Uh, so before we get to the Q&A though, you talked a little bit about advice on um, how to keep like the wreath alive, don't use flowers, etc. Can you talk about that a little bit more, especially because we all we all want that holiday spirit right now and we want it to last as long as possible, perhaps? Any other tips or, or uh, specifics for keeping them alive longer? I think if it's a real wreath, just definitely keep it outside. If you keep it inside, the heater's not going to help. It's just kind of like a Christmas tree, but you can't keep watering it. The Christmas tree, you can keep watering at the bottom, but eventually if you stop watering it and the heater's on outside, it's gonna get brittle and it's gonna start falling apart. Same thing with a wreath. There's no way of watering it. Um, you could spray it, but um, that's not gonna do anything. They don't drink from, they drink from the bottom up. Um, some flowers like hydrangea and things like that, you can actually spray their actual petals and they drink from the flower in and from the stem up. But for a wreath, there's really nothing that you can do other than keep it in a colder area because they're, you know, they're used to outside because obviously that's where they grow. Okay, cool. Um, now for, for everyone here who's a, a DIY or obviously you're in a flower shop, you have all the flowers uh, and you can just throw stuff on the ground, which is fun. Yes. Uh, I wish I could do that <laughs> around my, my house. Um, for, for the supplies, uh, if, if someone is more DIY, they don't have this stuff ready, where, and, they, and by the way, if they're not close to Whittier, of course, if they are, they should go to you. But if not, if they're looking at their local Trader Joe's or flower shop, um, what supplies or places should they order from? Uh, and can you even order online or anything like that to, to put these things together? Yeah, I mean, I would definitely say with my with my um, shop local background, um, I would definitely say if there's like a farmer's market, I don't know if they're even open right now, but hopefully everything will start opening back up eventually. Um, but if there's a farmer's market, that probably means someone is growing things locally. So that would be really cool to support them and give back to a vineyard community. Um, so that would be nice. I mean, Trader Joe's, they're always so nice to me when I go in there to shop. Um, I don't buy flowers, but um, I'm sure they would be super helpful. Um, in regards to the wires, or glue gun or um, the little extra things for the holidays like these little ornaments um, a craft store or Amazon um, any of those places would have would have these kind of um, little mm -hmm. ornaments okay so you mentioned uh, the wires uh, we actually do have a, a question in the audience from Caroline uh, what gauge wire are you using or is there a specific kind that we could order Yes, let me go grab the box. Okay, unfortunately, the box does not say what kind of gauge it is. It just says it's florist wire. But I can ask my, um, I can ask my supplier and see. I use, um, I use a thin wire. It's one of the thinner ones just because it's easy to bend. I have thick ones, but it's just harder for my fingers and you don't need it that thick. So I use one of the, um, not the thinnest, but um, but I can definitely get that answer for you. What, what gauge it says, I'm sorry, I don't know. I thought it was on the box, but it's not. Okay, no, that's helpful. So thin, not too thin, not too thick, thin enough to, uh, to bend easily, but hold in place. And it is 
Okay. You called it floral wire. So I'm sure a we could floor, search yeah, that. Yeah, it's florist wire. Florist okay. wire, okay. Um, so a couple more questions now. I've got some questions in the audience. And again, I encourage everyone to ask some more as we go. But uh, what was the name of the berries that you used? They're called Hypericum berries. So it's H-Y-P-E-R-I-C-U-M, Hypericum berries. And they come in red, like you see. They come in brown, they come in white, they come in peach. Um, kind of a, a kind of funny, like random, and they also come in green, random information. But it's what St. John's Sport is made out of. So they say if you are depressed, put them in a vase. They have a smell to them, um, and they're supposed to help. So I'm not sure, I've never tried it, but that's what I was told um, in my classes. So, but they're called Hypericum berries. Hypericum, okay. We are learning things today because I never even heard about that before. Okay, uh, so next question. Oh, and by the way, that one was, that question was from Maria who I uh, shouted out earlier in Iowa. Uh, next question. That wet green styrofoam stuff, which I have no idea what it is or, or what, but when is it, when is that used? And this question is from Elizabeth Cervantes. Okay, so that's called Oasis Foam. And so what you do is you um, fill up a bucket of water or your sink, let it submerge on its own. So you don't pour water on top of it because there's all these little holes in it and you want to get all the air bubbles out. So just let it go ahead and submerge um, for about like 15 to 30 minutes. And it's a big wide range. It depends on how, how long you have. Um, but yes, it's called Oasis Foam. I use that only in like centerpieces. Um, this is actually Oasis. And an oasis wreath that I'm going to be making, making later. It's for a funeral, but it's the same kind of foam. Um, so it just, it gets soaked up, but I only use it for centerpieces. Um, something like this, if it's in a vase, I would definitely put water. If it's in a container, like one of these, which is ceramic or, um, or cement, Cement, you're not going to want to put water in there. So I would put a liner and then foam in here. And then also, if I don't want things to move around, I'd put it in um, a centerpiece. So if you want to last longer, always use water because um, you can't keep refilling the Oasis. Um, you can keep pouring it in, but it never actually soaks back in after the first time. So I would just use it when, I was, when I'm doing centerpieces. Oh, fascinating. And um, I didn't know it came in wreath shape. So is that something the audience might consider if they wanted to keep their wreaths alive longer or um, not? No, no, because that, th this one that I have here is like kind of like a one-time use. It's for, it's for a funeral. So it's just to design something. It's, this is not going to look like a Christmas wreath at all. It's going to look like a very funeral, you know, funeral wreath. So no, the Oasis is not going to make your wreath last longer. Um, it's going to be a lot more work because you're going to have to cut out little pieces of the Christmas tree, the Christmas greens, and individually place them all around here. Um, but no, it's not going to last any longer. As soon as, um, as soon as it dries up, the flowers will start drying up too. So they're not going to get as much water. They're actually going to do a lot better in the wreath that we made earlier. Okay, great. So when it comes, we, we, we've got a lot of questions about this, keeping them fresh, making them stay alive longer. When it comes to, uh, uh, I guess, refreshing the water or changing the water, let's say in the vase, are you supposed to change the water on a daily basis uh, or less frequently? And then um, what about additives? You know, some, some flowers you buy comes with packets of the little uh, plant food, but I, you know, some of us don't know how often you're supposed to change that or if you're supposed to get more plant food or whatever. Right. Yeah. So I actually have a huge bucket of that plant food. Um, does it work? I'm not really sure, to be honest. I've been using it for 17 years and people say my flowers last <laughs> forever, but oh. I, I, I don't know because I've never not used it. So it's just something like, I just feel like they need. So I put a little bit of powder in them as they go out the door. Um, I would change the water every couple of days. I mean, unless it gets murky, if you accidentally put some greenery in there, it's gonna get murky faster. Um, and so you can kind of tell, in a red vase, it's gonna be harder, but in a clear vase, you'll be able to tell if it starts getting brown. Yeah, redo the water. 
um, give the flowers another cut at an angle because if you don't recut them, it's not really going to do anything um, if you change uh. the water. So you have to recut them every time you change the water because they do get sealed off on the bottom. I see. That's what I'm doing wrong. Okay, so refresh the water every few days and recut at an angle. Recut, yeah, definitely recut. Even if you're not changing the water, you'll want to recut them because they do, they get sealed off and you'll notice they get like um, brown at the bottom. And so they're not able to get any more water. So you'll definitely always want to recut them. Perfect. Okay, uh, let's see. Do we have any more, any final questions from the audience? Um, I think we covered it. So yeah, I think we went through a pretty quick Q and A. Uh, if there are any more, get them in quickly. Um, this is great because, uh, you know, we're all looking for a little extra holiday spirit. And this is something that we can all do. You know, now we know how to do it ourselves, how to, how to uh, source the, in the materials, if you will. And Shannon showed us how to do it like super fast. So that that's great. Uh, Shannon, do you have any other or any last bits of advice or any any last comments that you want to make before we wrap the program? Um, I don't think so. But if you guys have any questions, you can always go onto my website um, or email me, or you can call Shannon G's Flowers. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions at any time. Oh, that's that's really nice of you. Uh, great. Well, thank you, Shannon, for being willing to uh, continue to uh, answer questions. And uh, we're going to wrap, wrap up the program now, but um, this was great to see you in action and see your, see your business and uh, know about how well received you are in your community. That's fantastic. So thank, thank you, you uh, Shannon, for sharing your experience. You're welcome. Thanks so much for asking me. Of course. Um, great. Well, um, before we go, uh, again, everyone give, join me in giving a virtual thanks to Shannon. Uh, we have uh, a number of thanks popping up in the chat and the Q&A, so everyone's been appreciative. But thanks again. Shannon Gimbel Hammer, Class of 03, Shannon G's Flowers, um, and uh, great to see you again. Thank you. All right. Now, uh, before we go, just have a final poll for everyone in the audience. We just want to get a little feedback uh, so we can add uh, more relevant content to future Lunch with Eaters. So... What other topics would you like to see addressed? Um, we're going to continue the program in the new year after the holidays. So uh, more DIY demonstrations like this, financial literacy, uh, environmental and ju social justice issues, politics, education and student affairs, or more. Uh, so please let us know. Take about five more seconds to let us know what you would like to see. We love learning from you about what you want to see in terms of engaging content for all generations of anteaters. And we're going to try to do our very best to bring that to you because no matter what it is, we have alumni experts in the community, as you have seen over and over again, who would love to share their expertise with you. So uh, thank you for attending. Our next Lunch with Eaters, as I mentioned, will be in the new year. Specifically, it'll be on Friday, January 8th. So we're going to hit the ground running and we have an incredible uh, subject, uh, alumni host, Erin Gruel. Erin Gruel, if you don't remember, or if you don't know her, she's actually quite famous for being the author and subject of Freedom Writers. She was portrayed by Hilary Swank in the movie. Uh, so that is her, Erin Gruel. She's one of our uh, amazing alumni from 12 to 1 p.m. that day, January 8th. So look out for that invitation. If you do have any further questions, or for Shannon or us, feel free to email us at alumni at uci.edu. And then finally, we have recorded this webinar. So if you wanted to go back and reference some of Shannon's tips or see exactly how she made that bow or, or anything, this will be posted on our website and sent to you in the thank you email that we do post event. So uh, that's it, everyone. Uh, I hope you have a great weekend. Thank you for joining us for Lunch with Eaters. And we will see you back again in January. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.